Hey everyone, it's Ella, and I wanted to share with you guys how I made $275 in less than 30 minutes. It's a very basic and simple strategy, and I believe it works well for beginning traders, anyone exploring strategies, and or some kind of supplement for uh, trading. It does reduce the amount of time and energy that's needed with trading. You just be able to take up, basically take a look at it and determine what position you need to uh, take. We are using TradingView, and it is a free platform. So you don't need to have any sort of subscription for this with what I'm showing you. And it will have three free indicators. You don't have to pay for it or anything like that. Everything on TradingView that I'm going to be showing you is absolutely free. Uh, before anything, I do want to talk about disclaimer. So this strategy is assuming that you do know the basics of trading and are familiar with some of the wording. The basics of trading should include, but is not limited to knowing how to mark up charts in a higher time frame, knowing market structure, indicators, having general understanding of how moving averages uh, move, retests, support resistance, high lows, order blocks, etc. And as always, trade at your own risk. Any analysis, strategy, or ideas being shared is for my personal and educational purposes only, not to be utilized as trading and or financial advice. Consult a licensed professional for any financial advice, and all trading involves high risk, and you can lose a substantial amount of money, no matter what method, strategy that you use. All trading involves high risk. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. I am not a CPA and or a financial advisor. So the objective is that we're going to do, um, we're going to show you guys the indicators, how to set it up, how to use it, uh, a couple of different settings and tips like that. What to look for when trading is basically just the trading rules, assets and sessions that are best to trade with, especially uh, if you have like a different schedule. Uh, and so we're going to also do examples of trades for long and short positions. And we're going to do a little bit of back testing as well, but I'm not going to go too in depth with that. We're going to do that in a completely different video. I want to keep this nice, short and sweet. So like I said, we're going to be doing trading view and I'm assuming that you know the basics. Uh, there's going to be three free indicators that we're going to be using. And the first one's called Trader XO Macro Trend Scanner by BTC Charlie. That's the author of Bitcoin Charlie. We will be using Sessions as well by Lux Algo. And we're also going to do the Squeeze Momentum Indicator by Lisa Bear, or I'll refer it as a SMI. There are a couple of specific settings, so no worries. I'll be showing that for you guys. And of course, no subscription is required. Like I said, you don't have to pay for anything. You can set up a free account. The free trading view account does have a couple of restrictions. You're going to only be limited to three indicators that you can use. But like I said, no worries. These are all free also indicators and there's three of them. There are going to be ads for the free trading view account. It's going to be at the bottom left, but it isn't going to, uh, prevent you from visually seeing your charts or anything like that. It's really not that, you know, um, it's, it's not that distracting or anything. There is a basic subscription. I believe this is the cheapest one. It's about $15 currently with the price um, when you guys are watching this. So just double check on the price if you're interested in a basic subscription. This one will allow you to have five indicators. There's no ads. And you can also do more detailed back testing, which will be really helpful in the future if you are interested, of course. Um, I do have a basic subscription, so my trading view will look a little bit different. And I do have everything customized to my liking. So, like I said, it's going to probably look a little bit different. But don't worry, within time, if you've never used trading view, you'll get used to it. And if you have any questions with it as well, you guys are more than welcome to uh, message me, hit me up, and I'll help you guys with trading view. All right, so let's go to trading view and pause if you need to. We're going to do all of the indicators and stuff. So this is what my trading view looks like. I've got all of my drawing tools at the bottom that are already customized to my liking. So we're going to go at the top with the indicators and we're going to top uh, the type, excuse me, macro trend. Like I said, it's Bitcoin Charlie Trader XO Micro Trend Scanner. And if you've never used trading view before, you can hit this little star right here. And if you go under the favorites, it will it will be added in your favorites list. So we'll do Bitcoin Charlie, Trader, XO, Micro, Trend. Then we're going to do Sessions, Lux, Algo. Make sure it's favorited as well. And then we're going to do the Squeeze, SMI, Momentum, Indicator, Lazy Bear. Make sure that's a favorite. So it should look like this. We're going to go into the settings. 
the macro trend scanner is this scanner right here that's going to give us the signals that we're looking for. That's the green and uh, red bars or candlesticks and little, little arrows. So we're going to go under settings right here. You're more than welcome to change the colors, but I've kept the colors, I believe, the same. The inputs, I don't think I did anything to it. So this is the straight out of the box with this specific indicator. Then sessions, I have enabled all of the sessions for New York, London, and Sydney. I have enabled all the ranges. I have disabled Tokyo and I have disabled all of the other options as well for the sessions like the trend line mean and the VWAPs. I disabled the dashboard. I don't I don't think I needed the dashboard. So when you're done with that, go under defaults and save as a default so that if ever in the future you either accidentally deleted or removed your indicator or this indicator specifically or any indicators in the future, whatever you come across, you can always go back, find it. As long as you have it saved as the default, all of the settings that you did will should still be added in there as well. So then we're going to go with the SMI, the squeeze indicator. And this one, standard, straight out of the box. I don't think I did anything different. The only thing that I did change is just the color. And I changed the plot color uh, number two to white so that visually you can see more of, um, of the dots, which is going to be um, will be in the uh, the list of rules as well. So just briefly, the macro trend is the the ones that are giving us the signals for the bear and bulls. The session, Sydney is orange. Red, I'm sorry, not red. Yellow, <laughs> my colors are off. I'm sorry. <laughs> Blue is London, and green is New York, and they are labeled just FYI. So no need to memorize the colors or anything. They will be labeled. And I also, with the sessions, they have the days labeled of uh, separation of the days as well. So no need to worry at all. You don't have to remember any of that. The sessions or the indicators in general will have everything for you. Sorry about that. I don't know about the whole color thing, but <laughs> all right. So when and what to trade. So this is going to also depend on your schedule. We're going to look at London and London session is between 3 a.m. new to until noon Eastern Standard Time. No, that doesn't mean you're going to be on it from 3 a.m. to noon. We're just looking for around that time frame, possibly for between 3 a.m. to noon Eastern Standard Time. Like I said, like like I was saying, though, it does depend on your schedule. Um, so if London doesn't work, then you can also try New York session. New York sessions around 8 a.m till 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So what you want to do is you want to pay attention to an hour, an hour or two ahead when the session opens. So let's say you're picking London. 3 a.m. is the is when it opens. So you might want to be up around 1 a.m. to 2 a.m. Uh, before London actually opens, just to basically see and study any of the previous sessions or previous days, any market structure. Make sure that you do watch out for news releases when this when this does happen. Okay, when you're when you're looking at your sessions when you're about to trade that type of type of thing. So the assets that we're looking for for London, I do prefer pound yen. Um, you can also do USD JPY. Yen pairs do exceptionally well. For New York, um, Dow Jones, Nasdaq, and the major pairs: your USD, pound USD, USD CAD, odd USD. Use the yen. Those are um, typically work well during uh, New York session as well. So the time frame that we're going to be looking at now, you can scalp this, but I don't recommend everyone to do this. I would recommend this if you have scalped, like if you have always scalped as a trader, then okay, go do it. That's that's you. That's great. But you, if you don't know what you're doing, you've never scalped before in your life, please don't do it. Um, we're looking at the one minute, five minute, 15 minute time frame. And the reason why I don't is that usually why I don't recommend scalping is usually it requires more trades and it means usually higher risk. You're literally in and out pretty much. You don't hold positions that long. So with what we're doing, we're talking about day trading. What I'm showing you guys is day trading. So this is 
five minute, 15, 30 minutes. And this is about two to three trades a week. Usually it's like a Tuesday to Thursday that I'll see you, some of the best setups, but you're not going to be holding positions for days and days on end. This is like a one day, you're in, you're out, you're done. Swing trading is usually ideal for someone working nine to five. Maybe the schedule, the sessions that we're talking about don't work too well for you. It's okay. These are usually the one hour, four hour daily time frames. They are fewer trades, but usually they're less risky. And I would say swing trading would be also good for beginners if you um, are beginning with trading, I would say, just because of the fact it trains you to have fewer trades and less risk. But when I do talk about risk management, I am referring to day trading when I'm talking about stop losses and stuff like that and, and take profits. Um, and we'll talk more about it and I'll emphasize that a little bit more. So what I do recommend is you pick one session, only one. You don't need to do both. Um, then only pick a handful of assets to trade two to three st uh, tops. You don't want to have like 10 different pairs or assets or metals, whatever the, whatever it is that you're picking, you don't want to have too much because when, when the markets move, they all move and you're going to be overwhelmed with managing your trades, how to enter, when to enter, it will get chaotic. So pick two or three tops. Okay. So for me, what has been most effective has been London pound yen. So the rules for this is London pound yen. So what we do is we wait for a bearable signal signal from the macro trend like I was showing you guys earlier. Then we're going to look for the most recent and or previous highs and lows from other sessions and just kind of in general support and resistance. We do want to pay attention to the trend. In a, and I'm assuming this is also you've done your top down analysis when we're talking about paying attention to trend and we're also talking about highs and lows, order blocks support and resistance, that type of stuff. So I'm going to assume you kind of know what I'm talking about with that. So after we've done and looked at the macro trend, a uh, bear bull signal, we want to look at the SMI or the squeeze momentum indicator, and we're going to buy if the bars are above zero or um, above zero and are green. And we're going to wait for at least, you know, two, three, five bars to form. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we're going to sell if the bars are below zero and are red. And we're going to, same thing, wait for about three, three, two, three, five bars to basically form. Now, when we see the white dots, these are usually indicators of a higher probability of a trade or entry. Now, in the beginning, I would just wait if I were you. Don't rush into, oh, yeah, higher probability uh, trades or entry let me risk a lot. No, just wait until you figure it out first. So then once we have all of those signals and we, you know, looked at the market structure, we're going to wait for a pullback and we're going to wait for, for a retest. Okay. And limit orders, limit orders are ideal. If possible, sometimes it'll just become like a market order. A risk management, like I said, this is more specifically for day trading, 20, 30 pips, stop loss, Market structure that is what I usually use for take profits, meaning I look for like the highs and lows. Um, they're usually over 50 pips, but you can do 50 pips uh, take profit if need be. But usually, you know, when I do market structure, it's more than that. So no trading on the weekends, no trading on Sunday. Um, I don't like trading anytime, anytime uh, past uh, noon on Friday. I close my trades before noon on uh, Eastern Standard Time. Usually it's like 10 or 11. I'm out in the morning. I don't I don't care because I don't want to get stuck um, holding a position on the weekend. All right. So this is an example of a buy position. So we have London, pound, yen are the rules, right? And then we've got the market structure right here. We've got the uh, Asian session high or previous high uh, right here. Remember, um, orange is 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 asian session or sydney and then we have the macro trend that's giving us a bear bull signal more specifically this one is giving us a buy signal we've got that triangle that's green and all the candles are also green and then we look at the bottom we have the smi the squeeze momentum indicator that's got the i'm sorry i don't know why this is red 
but we've got the green bars right here and it's going above the zero. So if you look at the right, there's that zero that I was talking about. So it's above the zero and we've got the white dots and we've got the green bars going up. So we want to wait about two, three uh, dots or two, three bars basically. And so when that happens, we're going to wait for that price to retest these sessions right here. Um, these previous highs and lows, or even if you wanted to, um, to use the, the moving average as well as a retest. But price is retesting that previous high with that ses the session right there. And this move was roughly about 137 pips or even just 130 pips with spread um, and any sort of volatility factors that, that's in there. 130 pips is not is really, really good. That's uh, about $130 or $1,300, depends on your um, account. So we have a short position or selling position for this one. Uh, back to the rules, we've got London pound yen. We look at the market structure. You guys can see that we have the low, the Asian session low that's right here. And then we have another session low as well from New York and we also have London. So when we have these lows, we need to just pay attention to them basically because usually once price breaks past them, whoo, that's a big move. And as you guys can see, that's a pretty big move. So anyways, we do have the macro trend that's giving us a, a signal. This one is a short signal or selling position. We've got the red arrow uh, that's right here with the red uh, red candles that's coming down. And if we look at the bottom, we have the SMI that's below the zero and we do have the white dots and we have the red bars, okay? So when that happens, we wait for the retest. We, there's two options. You could have waited for a retest for the Asian session, or you could have also waited for the Asia, other uh, session lows that are right here as well. And it also depends on what you see when you're at the chart. You know, sometimes you're not able to see your charts right then and there. You kind of miss it. It's okay. Um, but for this particular move, we did a retest and it was about 116 pips, give or take. So well over a hundred pips that's lovely it's a hundred dollars a thousand dollars that kind of thing so what we're going to do now is we're going to do a little bit of back testing and let's see here this is yep so we have pound yen ah here you go. here's my rules so i just want to be clear though that this is uh, that we're not we haven't done any sort of um top-down analysis this is literally just looking at the 15 minute time frame um, this is literally all as well. I just want to be clear and I'm, I'm going to be transparent of if we're going to be uh, having some losses or we're going to be breaking even that type of thing. But we're going to basically just do a week, just one week worth of, you know, back testing. And it's going to be hopefully it's not too confusing or anything like that, because we've already seen what like when, when, when we're doing this, we've already seen what's happened. So it's easy to kind of determine what we would have done. But when you're trading and everything is just kind of happening right in front of you, it can be a little challenging. That's why I do recommend back testing. Um, if you do have the basic subscription, it will allow you to do a more detailed back testing. And I think that will help you out in the in the future as well and to test this out as well. So let's start with um friday actually today's friday actually that's moving right now um because the market hasn't closed all right so rules of london pound yen yep this is it market structure high and low so we look at to the left and we have sydney or the asian session that's right here that there's that high and then we also have that low and then we're going to look to see if we got the macro trend bear bull signal which we did for london remember london is blue and we have that bear signal. And then we look at the bottom, the SMI, and we have the red bars that are forming. And it is also below the zero. And we do have the white dot. Cool. We have white dots. So this was, um, oh, I did want to say, uh, I had said previously that I like using market structure, like highs and lows. So this is actually a prime example of what would have been a situation that I would have uh, taken. Uh, because once that session, uh, once we got that signal and we've got the uh, macro trend signal, the SMI signal as well, uh, we look at the low 
and notice that price broke down, my target would have been this low right here, which was London and New York's session lows. That would have been great. You know, for a fact, that would have been a fantastic move. So let's just say you did it right here. That's about oops, 50 pips right here. So even let's say you missed it and you were just waiting for this, uh, for, for price to break past the session low for Asian session, that would have been about 35 pips, give or take on that. So that's not bad, and that was just Friday. So this one may might have been initially, uh, maybe either a break even or a little bit of profit. It just it depends. So let's go back to the rules: London pound yen, market structure, highs and lows. So we've got the highs and lows right here for the session. We also have a, a couple of highs right here from new york and another asian session from prior then let's look at the low as well from london that was from the previous day and we also have the low from this um asian session as well so this would have been actually a really interesting trade you always want to wait you always want to wait just because the signal is telling you that it's for a bearish or bullish um, signal doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to jump in. We still have to take market structure into consideration. We still have to take previous days how the previous day was because that's very important. All of all of the signals and stuff are just confirmation to see whether or not it's a good probability to put a position in. So, for example, we did get a bearish signal, but you noticed it didn't. For a position that's supposed to go down, it didn't break past the session right here, the session low. So that would have been a red flag. Another red flag is we aren't and we didn't see a substantial amount of red bars going down to give us an indicator that this would have gone a lot lower. So another two red flags right there. But then at some point, it's going to show you a bullish signal. And so, and we, and it showed us that, right? We have that bullish signal. So a couple of confirmations that would have made it a valid uh, entry for us, a valid, uh, you know, position uh, is we also started seeing SMI, the red bars, no white bars, uh, no white dots, but it's okay. We've got the red bars, uh, I'm sorry, bars. <laughs> and then we've got the Asian, uh, Asian, sh uh, blah, blah, Asian session high up here. And you notice that price started breaking past that, right? Boom, right there. So this would have been considered a good trade because we followed all of our rules. Unfortunately, even when we do follow our rules, it, sometimes it doesn't work out. So this would have either been a little bit of profit or maybe a break even. So let's just say that does happen. We might have gotten like 20 pips on it, maybe 20 bucks, 20 bucks, whatever. But don't worry because what usually happens is even if you do have losses, and this is why risk management is important. If you do have losses, usually next day or two or your next couple of trades, you're going to end up getting that back. And so this is a prime example right here. If you just kind of waited a little bit, and this could have been news related because it was like a Thursday. Um, not like it matters, but usually, you know, there's different kinds of moves or whatever that do happen. I think this was a like news related. But if you did look, excuse me, uh, we did get our bearish signal, okay? And SMI is also showing us there is a fantastic amount of red bars and they're big red bars with white dots. And it broke through our Asian session. That's right here. So this would have been a fantastic move to get your money back if you lost money in your initial trade. And even if let's say you did, right? Let's say you missed out on this trade. It's okay because Friday, the trade that we did, that was about 30 pips. So you would have still been profitable, at least for just these two days, right? Let's just say in an example. So then the entry that we, the, um, the take profit, yet again, same example. If we had looked to the left, we would have seen the slow that's right here from the London session that we had previously marked. So I would also recommend that when you do market structure type of take profits, don't do it all the way down to the low. As you guys can see, there's a little bit of leeway that's happening there. I usually like to do about, you know, five pips um, away from the high end or low because Sometimes, like I said, it's not going to hit that low of 
that particular um, market structure. So then uh, that was Thursday. So let's look at Wednesday. So this is a great one. This is fantastic. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. And it actually also addresses, if we look left, addresses what I had just said with the market structure. That market structure sometimes does not go, when you do take profit, doesn't go all the way down. Because if you also look, London over here has this low, but it never, oopsie daisy, it never, um, price never went all the way down, right? It actually did a New York session low, but it's okay. It's not a big deal, like I said. So let's go back to the rules. London pound yen, market structure high and low. We've got the session that we had already marked. Sydney, that's right here, and Sydney high and Sydney low. All right, so then we have the macro trend giving us a bear signal. We wait for that. And then we look right here. We have the SMI that's giving us the red bars, but no white dots. It's okay. We could still uh, put a trade on it. So we could have done a retest up here. Uh, 81 pips, or if you wanted to wait as well, you could also do about 50 pips, give or take on that one, right? Not bad. And the reason, by the way, the reason why I did also uh, say, you know, you could have done it up here is if you are familiar with how moving averages work, I do apply that concept on there. Uh, moving average retests. Uh, so if you're kind of more advanced and know what I'm talking about, you know, you'd have probably gone on a smaller time frame, like a five minute time frame for a better entry. And I think this would have gone, this would have been a, a great entry to get like over 80 pips on that one. So then we have Tuesday. So Tuesday, this is fantastic because this this happens at least once a week where, you know, it's just ranging. And ranging usually means that there's been no substantial movement with the markets and it happens. So I'm glad that this one actually was brought up. I would have been a little bit iffy in this with this particular uh, trade or this situation. I wouldn't have traded it. And a couple of things. One we don't have a signal not even a signal with 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 sydney no there was no other signal that happened here to the left remember all these other ones that we've had we've had signals around london um this one doesn't so that's a red flag we already know that we would not have probably taken this at all actually we shouldn't so two that's one signal, right? Or one red, 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 uh, red flag. But then if you look down here as well, we're not seeing a substantial amount of movement with the green bars either. They just look stagnant. So we haven't seen a signal, even though, yes, look at it later on down the road. Yeah, you, you probably would have made money if you did New York session, but that goes against the rules. We're not doing New York session. Um, it does overlap a little bit with London. But if you would have traded this, I wouldn't have traded it because it's a little too late for me. But if you did trade this, here's how I would have done it. If we knew that this was going to keep going up because we haven't got any conflicting sort of um, signals that we did get that bearish, bar, uh, bearish signal, but it wasn't substantial as you guys can see, because as that was forming, if you look at the bottom, we have the green bars moving up. If you were going to trade this during your accession, like I said, look for those highs, highs and lows. Look at that Asian session right here. Or if you weren't comfortable with that, you could have still done this, this high that's right here. Right there. So that could have been if, if we did the, the Sydney uh, Asian session um, all the way up to here, that it could have been 50 bucks or if you held it longer. Um, 90 bucks or 93 pips or whatever if you did it up to this high right here let's say right here 70 pips give or take on that one but remember this did this did give us a signal around london especially in the early of london so we're i wouldn't have entertained that i don't i wouldn't like that it's not a, and it's not a big deal because there, there's no rush for it. There's no need to rush your trades. There's no need to feel like you have to put in a position. 
So this was, oh, this is perfect too, because this actually would have probably been a loss for us. And like I said, when that happens, not a big deal. Sometimes London reverses itself. You'll get a signal. It looks substantial. looks great. Take a loss. Don't worry about it because usually if you give it some time, it might reverse back. So let's go back to the rules though. London pound yen, market structure. We got Sydney right here, Asian session. Asian, ah, I didn't do it right. Asian yeah. session right there. And then this was like Friday's low right there, whatever. So let's look at the bear signal. We got that bear signal that happened, um, but it didn't penetrate the low right here or even the low from Friday. And we also, we did, I mean, we did see some fantastic movement here with SMIs, but the fact that it didn't try to go past this low though was a bit of a red flag. So if you did enter this, you would have been at a loss. And if you did, like I said, not a big deal. But if we look at the bullish signal though, and this is magnificent because it pushed past the high of Sydney that's right here, right? And we also have our green bars that are above the zero with SMI and we've got these little white dots. So all we had to basically do, remove this, is enter for the retest and yeah, we would have had about, let's just say 80 pips. Let's just say 80 pips. And did I do this right? Oh no. So like 80 pips, give or take on that one, right? Awesome. And it's perfect and it works. So I'm hoping um, this helps someone either get a different um, strategy or supplement or if you're just exploring and if you think this is this is something that works for you, then that's great. Um, I do like it. It's easier and for me it just reduces the amount of, out of anything, it reduces the amount of energy that I have to give, you know, trading all the time. And I only limit it to a handful of pairs that, that I basically have. Like if I see a setup, cool. If I don't, move on to the next one. I don't worry about it too much. But anyways, if you guys have any questions or need anything, uh, just let me know. I am more than happy to, um, there you go. I'm more than happy to answer any questions. I have YouTube and Instagram, so you guys can find me in any of those platform with the handle or, or tag she day trades. Uh, but yeah, just let me know. Uh, I, and I'll do more videos as well with the back testing for London pound yen and for other assets, either for London session and or for even, um, even for New York session, because Euro USD and all of the major pairs do extremely well with this as well. Anything that's basically trending, uh, can do it can do wonders with this because this is more of a trend, a trend strategy, I guess you could say. But anyways, thanks guys and hope you uh, enjoy this event.